Okay, Psalms 119, verse 161. Gonna finish up on Psalms 119. We did it all. Unless the rapture happens in between. Again, if your Bible has markings in Psalms 119, little weird characters and words, that is the Jewish Hebrew alphabet. And it's Shin. Shin. Princes have persecuted me without a cause. And so did they, Jesus Christ. The government persecuted. The, the religious people persecuted Jesus without no cause. Pilate says, I, you know, I find no fault in him. But here's the government picking on the Christian the psalmist. Government don't love you. They just want your tax. They just want your vote. And you're, you're fool. But my heart standeth in awe of thy word. Again, it's the word, the word, the word, the word, the word. Glorious is the word of God, and he's standing. How amazing. Something that can be read every day, or is supposed to be read every day, every year. And you go through it again, it's like, it's a lie. How so many people hate the word of God. Many people don't want to hear the, Christians don't even want to hear the word of God. The word of God has been tampered. I mean, how many different versions of Romeo and Juliet? How many different versions are there of the classic? And yet the Bible, multiple versions because of adding and subtracting because men don't like what God said. I rejoice at thy word. So how, how are we doing? Does the word of God rejoice us? As one that findeth great spoil. You know, you, you're going down the road and right there on the sidewalk, three $100 bills and they're, they're real, they're not counterfeit, and they're yours. And yet, the psalmist says, and he said earlier, Said earlier, that he said one point earlier. He said, "I'd rather have the word than silver and gold." It's there. We read it. Verse one twenty-seven. Therefore, I love thy commandments above gold, yea, above fine gold. Keep your gold. I read. Listen, keep your gold because in New Jerusalem we're going to walk on gold, pure as gold. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall never pass away, and eternity will be the word of God. I hate and abhor extreme hatred, lying. I'll tell you what, what I hate. I hate when someone takes the Bible and makes a lie out of it. I hate when somebody says Jonah did not die. Jonah did not go to hell. I hate when, when they take a Bible and they add to it and, and they subtract to it and, and they lie. I hate when a man gets in a pulpit and he gets up there and he tells a ha 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 story. It's a lie. And I've been well versed to know as a doctor of theology, I know some of the preacher's stories and how they take it for their own personal life. It's a lie. I hate it. But thy law do I love. He loves the word and he hates lying. He just told you the word of God is not a lie. Sanctifying through thy truth, thy word is true. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Any Christian, any preacher out of the pulpit, who tells one lie, you're John 8, 44 of the devil, who's the father of all lies. You're going to stand to judge and see the Christ. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 12, a man shall give an account of every idle word. 
woe to us. Seven times a day do I praise thee because of thy righteous judgment. Judgment. That, you know, that's when God does something to get our attention. Or that's when God does something because we have not gotten God's attention. And judgments may be a, ch a chastisement. Judgments may be evil. Judgments may be, uh, you know, form of weather, form of disease, a form of, you know, you've sinned against God. You're going to sin against God. And he says, listen, they're righteous. And I thank thee, and I praise thee seven times a day that he has read the word of God, he has studied the word of God, and he sees that if you don't obey, there are severe consequences. And just by reading the words, you know, I better not do that. Better not do that. Sure don't want that to happen to me. Sure don't want to get leprosy. Because the law said, hey, leprosy may be because you're not going to listen to God. Great peace have they which love thy law. And nothing shall offend them. Oh. Say, so, well, I know a Christian who's in turmoil. I know a Christian who is suffering. I know a Christian's got problems. Yeah, and I know that Christian, if he's in the Word, he loves the Lord, and he's doing correct. I know that Christian's got peace. And you can't explain that peace. And I have personally had peace when I've been in turmoil, and everybody looks at you, you know, you handle that well. I'm like, I did. Okay. You say so. And peace is the fruit of the Holy Spirit that you get when you're saved. The world don't get it. The world can't get the Spirit. They can't understand the Spirit. And Jesus says the world <coughs> has a peace, but it's temporal. It don't last long. And it costs. And offend them. There's today, they're, they're offended at everything. And when a Christian is offended, he's stepping out of the love and the peace. He's stepping out of the word. He's sinned against God. Offending or being offended is a sin. Lord, I have hope for thy salvation and done thy commandment. God's salvation is Jesus Christ. I hope for the Messiah. I want that salvation you're offering us. I mean, we're offering up the, the bulls and the goats. And Hebrews tells us that that's not enough. You needed to complete one sacrifice of Jesus Christ. That dying thief, Jesus said, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. That dying thief had to wait for the salvation. My soul has kept thy testimony. Everything God has done. And I love them exceedingly. And what are the testimonies? Everything that God has done for his people. Everything that God has done to the enemy of the people. As King Saul is told, you're going to die in battle with your son. And he did. How David, God said, listen, you're a man after my own heart. You're the one I've chosen. And he was. Now God told David, a son in your loins be Solomon. He's going to build that temple. And he does. The testimony. I have kept thy precepts and thy testimony. For all my ways are before thee. God, you, everything I do, you're watching. The eyes of the Lord in every place behold the evil and the good. And your word I have kept. I memorized it. I remember the story. I mean, I may not know where 
to find it right now, but I, I can find it. But I know about Elijah one time that kids were saying, now ball head, now ball head. And he cursed them, and then out came three she bears. I, I know that's in the Bible. I kept it. I know there was a time in the world that there was violence. And God called the man Noah. That's in there. I know it. I know the story. I know partial of the stories, but some of the story. Of the, of the wilderness journeys of Moses, Aaron, and Joshua, and the children of Israel. I've kept them. I know them. Tog. Tog. Let me cry. Let my cry come near before thee, O Lord. There's another place in the book of Psalms that says, Lord, put my tears in a bottle. You ever realize that your tears go up to heaven? Your tears are being monitored by God? Give me understanding according to thy word. You want understanding? The word of God says how to get understanding. Understanding comes through the word. You're not going to get understanding in the public school system. You're not going to get understanding of a college and university. And you're sure not going to get a understanding in a seminary. Did I say it correct? Seminary. We got so many Bible schools and Bible colleges and no, nothing's coming out of them. And many that come out of them, they're, they're, they've been perverted of the Bible. They come in and going in, King James only, and they come out nonsense. Let my supplication, it's a petition, it's a, it's a, it's a earnest request. Seeking God come before you. Let my tears become before you. Let my earnest request come before thee. Deliver me according to thy word. I can get understanding and I can get delivered by the word of God. It's in the pages. My lips shall utter praise when thou hast taught me thy statute. God has shown them what the word has said. There's praise. Thank you, Lord, for your word. <clears throat> my tongue shall speak of thy word. It's so interesting and so wonderful that the writer is so fascinated by the word of God. It's all about the word. And you got 38 instances of the word. W O R D. And then, I'm looking it up right now. You got four instances of the word, W O R D S. I haven't looked up testimonies. I have not looked up statutes. I have not looked up uh, the precepts. There is much. Of 176 verses of Psalm 119, there is much on the Word. There is much on the law, which is the Word. The law is Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. The commandments are, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. You're going to put a battlement upon their roof. You can't touch this woman. If you go into battle, you must do this. And if you're going to get in the land, do this. Those are the commandments. The judgments. Or when God has pronounced a, 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 a disturbance, when God has put a trial, when God has put a chastening upon the enemies of him or the people of him. It's all surrounded by the word of God. Thy tongue shall speak of thy word and all thy commandments are righteous. Yeah. There's a reason, there's a purpose. Oh, man, you know, God is so cruel, he won't allow the Jewish people to eat swine or pork. There's a reason. Oh, God, he won't allow them to, 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 to ink their skin and make marks for the dead and all. 
There's a reason for that. My tongue shall speak of thy word, and all thy commandments are righteous. The dietary law were righteous. Let thy hand help me, for I have chosen thy precepts. I've chosen the word of God, and I need help. You help me, Lord. You help me. God will use his hand. God will use the angels. God will use other men. The book of Judges, you had angels, you had men, you had God helping the nation of Israel with judgment, with a testimony. Each story in the book of Judges is, is a judgment. Oh, Israel, you don't want to get right? Well, here comes Moab. And we repent. And then God pronounces judgment upon the enemies of Israel with an ox gold, with a jawbone of an ass. With a man who's got hair and strength of the Holy Spirit, with a man who, you know, he gets clobbered with a tent, with a tent peg and all that. Those are all judgments. There's commandments in there. I want you to go in there. I want you to fight those people, and I want you to win. I have longed for thy salvation, O Lord. Those how is God's salvation, and the law is my delight. Man, how many today, how many would say that the Word of God, the 66 books of the Bible, the King James, how many would honestly could say rightfully it's about the Word? It's about the Word. Your talk is of the Word. Your answers of the Word. You have Scripture and nothing else. And if you don't have the scripture, you know where to find it. You know how to find it. It's the word. That's lacking in the churches. Let my soul live. That's the eternal. It will live. It will li live in heaven or it will live in hell. It shall praise thee. Let thy judgment help me. Lord, let your butt lashing, your chastening. Let them show what you, what you have done to men and women of the Bible. Let me read that. Let me learn from that on how not. If there's one thing I can learn from David and Solomon, you better get your eyes off. A woman is not your wife. If I know anything from Cain and Abel, I don't bring an offering of my own hands. I bring the blood. And then I might sacrifice. I mean, I might suffer. I might even die in the cause of religion. I have gone astray like a lost sheep. We all do. We all backslid. We all take the wrong road. That's why Pilgrim's Progress should be read with your Bible. Pilgrim goes on the journey to the celestial city, and man, he goes off in many different ways. He gets sidetracked after sidetracked, and he's fooled by himself. He's fooled by the devil. He's fooled by characters of men. Who are, are of the devil. And he's guided by God. He's guided by a friend of God. Seek thy servant. I'm lost. Seek me. Jesus said if a man have a hundred sheep. Ninety nine sheep and lost one sheep. Does he not go out and search for that one sheep? Here it is. God if I'm lost. Come and get me. For I do not forget thy commandments. Again, it's memorization. The psalmist concludes with a conclusion of 176 verses. And what can you conclude for the, from the 176 verses? Memorize your Bible. And it's all about the Word. The Bible is all about Jesus and it's all about the Word. It ain't about Gentiles. It's not about me not about America. It's about the Word. It's about Jesus and a nation called Israel.